In this video, I'm going to share with you about the recent developments in Integrated Shield Plan's portability and why it might not be the solution many think it is. Let's get into it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I am Iggy here and I've been covering topics such as stocks, finance, CPF, and basically everything related to growing your wealth. The Investing Iguana is featured and ranked 8th in the 2023 Influential Tigers by Tiger Brokers with over 800,000 reads. I've covered over 500 videos and over 250,000 watch hours as of September 2024. Understanding IP Portability So, you're probably wondering what's the big deal about IP portability. Well, my friend, it's a game changer. Without portability, if you want to switch to a better insurance plan, you'll have to give up your existing coverage and start all over again. That means losing your coverage for pre-existing conditions, which is a major bummer. But with portability, you can take your coverage with you, just like your phone number. It's a no-brainer, right? I mean, who doesn't want the freedom to shop around for the best insurance deal without worrying about losing their hard-earned coverage? Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but Iggy, what about the potential downsides? Ah, oh, my curious friend, that's a great question. Some experts worry that portability might lead to a race to the bottom, where insurance providers compete to offer the cheapest plans, which might not be the best value in the long run. But I say, a little competition never hurt anyone. And besides, with portability you'll have the power to choose the best plan for your needs. And that's what matters most. Just think about it, my friend. With IP portability, you'll be the boss of your own insurance coverage. And that's what I call financial freedom. The government's stance. You know, the government's stance on IP portability is really interesting. So our Minister of State for Health, Rahayu Mazam, recently addressed this issue in Parliament. And the Ministry of Health actually conducted a study on whether IP insurance can be made portable. And get this, they found that full IP portability isn't the best solution for Singapore. I know, I was surprised too, especially since many of us have been hoping for more flexibility in our healthcare coverage. But here's the thing, the Ministry of Health has been studying this issue carefully, and they've looked at arrangements in other countries too. And what they found is that IP portability isn't actually that common globally. And usually, insurers have to underwrite new policies, which can result in additional conditions or exclusions. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but Iggy, what about countries like Australia and Ireland that have implemented full portability? Well, it's true that they have, but it's a different story here in Singapore. Our national health insurance scheme, MediShield Life, already covers all residents regardless of age or health status, and the government is working to keep healthcare costs manageable. So, while IP portability might seem like a good idea, it's not necessarily the best solution for our unique situation here in Singapore. Global perspective, you know, it's always fascinating to look at how other countries handle healthcare and insurance, right? So let's take a peek at what's happening globally. In places like the Netherlands and Switzerland, they do have portability, but here's the thing. It only applies to their basic national health insurance. Their supplemental private insurance, which is similar to our IP insurance, still needs underwriting. So it's not like you can just switch plans willy-nilly without any consequences. And that's important to note because sometimes we think that portability means complete flexibility. But that's not always the case. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, but Iggy, what about the UK? I've heard their National Health Service, NHS, is amazing. And yes, it is. But even in the UK, while the NHS provides comprehensive coverage, if you want private insurance you'll still need to go through underwriting. And in Australia, where they have a pretty robust private health insurance system, portability exists, but there are still rules and restrictions around pre-existing conditions. So you see, every country has its own unique system. And while portability might seem like a straightforward concept, it's actually quite complex. And that's why it's so important to understand the nuances of our own system here in Singapore the real challenges. So let's dive into the real challenges surrounding IP portability. There are essentially three main groups of people who are clamoring for this change. 
First, you've got those who are unhappy with the changes in their policy coverage. Maybe their insurer has tweaked the terms and they're not happy with the new deal. Then there are those who are facing difficulties when it comes to making claims. We've all heard horror stories about how hard it can be to get your insurer to pay out, right? And lastly, there are the older folks who are struggling to keep up with the premium costs. I mean, let's face it, healthcare costs can be astronomical. And it's tough to keep up, especially as you age. Now, making IPs portable sounds like a simple solution, but trust me, it's not. It would require a complex system called a risk equalization fund. Essentially, this would be a massive financial balancing act where insurers compensate each other for taking on high-risk customers. Think of it like a giant pool of money that needs to be managed carefully. And here's the thing. It would require public money and insurer contributions. So we're talking about a significant investment of resources. And let me tell you, it's not just about throwing money at the problem. It's about creating a system that works for everyone, insurers and policyholders alike. The pre-existing conditions factor. You know, the pre-existing conditions factor is a crucial aspect of this whole IP portability debate. And let me tell you, it's not just about insurers competing with each other. The real issue is that insurers aren't exactly eager to take on customers with pre-existing conditions. I mean, think about it. These customers typically cost more in claims than they pay in premiums. It's just the way it is. And that's why insurers have been hesitant to play ball. But here's the thing. Our government has actually been doing something about it. With MediShield Life, they've made sure that pre-existing conditions are covered. And come April 2025, we're going to see some exciting enhancements to this national health insurance scheme. The focus is shifting towards managing healthcare costs overall, which is a much more comprehensive approach. You know, after years of analyzing Singapore's financial landscape, I've got to say that I think the government's approach to this IP portability issue is spot on. I mean, sure, portability sounds great in theory. Who wouldn't want to be able to switch insurers easily? But when you dig into the practicalities, it's just not that simple. The implementation would be complex, costly, and potentially disruptive to the entire healthcare system. And let's be real, folks. Our healthcare system is already one of the best in the world, so do we really want to rock the boat? So what's the better solution? In my humble opinion, it's all about strengthening our basic healthcare coverage and managing overall healthcare costs. I mean, think about it. If our basic coverage is robust enough, we won't need to worry so much about switching insurers. And that's exactly what the government is focusing on with the upcoming MediShield Life enhancements in 2025. Trust me, guys, these changes are going to be a game changer. If you guys enjoyed this video, you're going to love my detailed breakdown of the upcoming MediShield Life enhancements in 2025. I explain exactly how these changes will affect your healthcare coverage and what you need to prepare for. Check it out by clicking the link in the top right corner. If you guys enjoyed this video, you're going to love my detailed breakdown of the upcoming MediShield Life Enhancement.